Since it's that time of year and everyone and their mom is releasing their list of top coasters, I have decided to hop on the trend. With not making a video of my list last year, a fair bit has changed since my most recent list. I got out to Cedar Point, I had some preferences change, and... Oh, that's it? Yeah, I don't really go to a ton of parks because I'm a normal person, but personally I still think my very extensive list of 93 coasters is more than enough to have a good and especially unique list. Throughout this video, all I ask of you guys is to be respectful. If I say something that you disagree with, that's fine. Be mad at me and unsubscribe if you want, just please keep it out of the comments. Or comment about it a few times because that will increase my engagement and get me more money. Jumping right in with number 25, we have Viper at Six Flags Darien Lake. I rode this coaster in the summer of 2021 and was pleasantly surprised. I've never been the biggest fan of Aeros coasters, but this one was actually a ton of fun. The drop had some really fun ejector airtime in the back row, the loop and batwing are super intense, and the corkscrews and helix are just smooth and fun. Riding an arrow looper that rides well was a really cool experience, and it made Viper jump out to be my favorite arrow, even beating out much bigger rides like Magnum XL200. 24 is going to be Gatekeeper at Cedar Point. I'm not sure how controversial liking Gatekeeper is right now, and frankly I don't care enough to find out, but it is a fun ride with some fun elements. The rolls over the entrance are super cool, and although there's not much else about Gatekeeper that's special, it's just an overall fun ride with a great flow. 23 is Goliath. Which one, you ask? <laughs> it's Six Flags Over Georgia's. While I have said in the past that I'm not a big b and Hyper fan, which I think is steadily changing, Goliath is a very fun ride. It doesn't have the craziest airtime, and it's certainly not the smoothest coaster I've ridden, but the consistent floater and the helix in the middle of the ride make for a fairly unique and all-around enjoyable coaster. Number 22 is nearly the exact opposite of Goliath, Raptor at Cedar Point. This B&M invert feels to me like a Batman clone on steroids, and while I'm not a massive fan of Batman clones, Raptor is actually super fun. There's a ton of whip all over the ride, it's pretty intense, and the drop even has a pop of floater in the back of the train. To cap it all off, the car crash brake run transition is hilariously brutal. The only coaster on this list from my home park lands at number 21, Screamin' Eagle. I have so many good memories of Screamin' Eagle, from being my first big coaster to getting a few front row night rides on it on a train with a bunch of enthusiasts that were just way too excited. Despite its age, Eagle is still relatively smooth and has some really good airtime, especially the random death drop in the middle of the ride. One of my absolute favorite coasters, and possibly the most underrated of all time, is Nighthawk at Carowinds, which finds itself just inside the top 20. I don't think I'm ready for a day when Nighthawk doesn't make one of these videos. It's a coaster a lot of the community likes to hate on, but it is so fun and has some crazy flying ejector airtime. Unfortunately, I doubt it has many years left, but until it's gone, I will praise this fantastic creation. On the other side of Carowinds, we find Flying Cobras, but beyond that is Afterburn for spot 19. Afterburn is a weird coaster to me. I didn't find it all that intense, but it was butter smooth and insanely whippy. I rode this beast of an invert three times and really enjoyed every one of those rides. The Zero G Roll and Corkscrew are two of the whippiest elements I've ever felt, taking something like a Batman clone and cranking it up to 11. Afterburn is a super, super solid supporting coaster for Carowinds lineup. Number 18 belongs to a coaster that I don't know how to feel about, Ravine Flyer 2. I rode this in late 2021 summer, and it is one of the most disappointing coasters I've ever ridden. Don't get me wrong, the layout is fantastic and it's a very fun ride, but I did not get the airtime everyone raves about, and it certainly wasn't a mini voyage. The pacing also suffers heavily towards the end of the ride, so while I think Ravine Flyer 2 has the potential to be top 10 on this list, it unfortunately finds itself down at number 18. Another semi-disappointing coaster sits at spot numero 17, with Twisted Cyclone at Six Flags over Georgia. I want to put this coaster higher, but when your only ride on something is a super early morning ride, it just doesn't run all that well. There were a couple pops of super strong airtime, 
But the wave turn was one of the more overhyped elements I've ever felt, and it was super super short. I think maybe if I can get a ride on Twisted Cyclone when it's warmed up, it would end up way higher, but for now, it's pretty comfortable here. Powder Keg claims the number 16 spot, hanging around with Nighthawk as wildly underrated. I personally love Powder Keg's launch and layout, plus it's one of the most unique coasters around with a lift hill halfway into the ride. All the elements kind of feel like some janky small version of something that would be on a B&M Hyper, but somehow the mini version finds itself above every B&M Hyper on my list. Sorry Intimidator fans, but that thing is just kind of boring. Speaking of Carowinds coasters, Copperhead Strike lands at number 15. Copperhead is a near-perfect ride as far as forces go, having crazy hang time, insanely strong ejector, laterals, and even lateral ejector. The dominant force here is obviously hang time, and Copperhead does it so well. The super comfy restraints don't allow any pain, and while they do kinda staple you, who honestly cares that much? I think Copperhead is an awesome coaster, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of MacRide's work in the future. 14 will probably come as a shock to a lot of you, but I have El Loco at the Adventure Dome here. This was a coaster I never expected to like as much as I did, but oh my gosh is it insane. The drop is one of my favorites on any coaster, especially with the restraints that allow a crazy amount of room. Following the drop there's a great moment of laterals, a ton of hang time, and in general, a seemingly fast paced and wild ride. If you go to Vegas for coasters, make El Loco a priority. Another Goliath sits at number 13, this one being the one at Six Flags Great America. Unlike the graceful b and Hyper, this Goliath is a ruthless RMC with an insane drop, some super fun lateral hang time stuff going on at the top of that first turn, a bonkers ejector hill, a dive loop that's better than the zero-g stall after it, and a baby version of the first turn to finish it off. Goliath was also butter smooth when I wrote it, so maybe if I go back and it's rough, it can climb a few spots. Number 12 takes us back to underrated coasters with Thunderbird at a Holiday World. When this ride first opened, it was easily considered the best wing coaster, but since then it feels like Gatekeeper and some others have been trying to steal its thunder. Get it? Thunder? Like, Thunderbird? Thunderbird is a super fun ride with an awesome launch and some fast paced inversions, with the two rolls at the end really sticking out as awesome elements. Number 17 is Ride of Steel at Darien Lake. Why did no one tell me how good this coaster is? While the drop and first turn don't do a ton, the first airtime hill gives sustained floater reminiscent of Millennium Force, and the helixes have absolutely insane sustained laterals. But who cares about that, because the three bunny hills I haven't mentioned are bonkers! The ejector on those hills is RMC caliber, but instead of being under a bulky lap bar, all that's holding you in is a T-bar. I can't get enough of Ride of Steel, please bring this coaster back to relevance. Number 10 marks the first super controversial placement on my list, being Fury 325 at Carowinds. I know, I know, I'm supposed to think this is the greatest thing on planet Earth or something, but the truth is that it's just not. Is it a really good ride? Absolutely, but the second half feels super slow compared to the crazy speed of the first half, and although the airtime is solid, it's broken up by two of the most pointless elements on the planet. By the way, for those of you who complain about Orion being short, if you take out the helix on Fury that no one likes, then they're nearly the exact same length. I won't say too much more, but Fury is an absolutely amazing ride and number one worthy for 50% of its course. Number 9 is a coaster that could look very different soon, Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point. Dragster has, or had, the best launch I have ever experienced, but the rest of the ride wasn't all that insane. The top hat is decent and can have some really fun airtime at the top, but going up and down isn't anything insanely special. If you're trying to figure out how a launch alone makes this coaster better than Fury, then shift your mindset a bit and think about how good this launch must be. Number 8 is a coaster I love way more than I should, Raven at Holiday World. Pre-major retrack, Raven was a super brutal coaster in places, and I could ask for nothing more. It has so much awesome airtime, most being floater, but the fifth drop delivering a violent burst of ejector in the back row. 
The turns in the woods that follow are so fun, giving some great laterals to end out a stellar ride. Number 7 is the OG and superior Giga, Millennium Force. In my eyes, where Fury fails to do what it's trying to do for half the ride, Millie succeeds with flying colors. Millie isn't and never will be the most intense or airtime packed coaster, but it definitely has its moments. A front row ride on Millie is an otherworldly experience, with the pacing being so good that you feel like you're flying the whole way through. It never lets up all the way to the end, with one of the last elements, an ejector bunny hill, being one of the best. Number 6 is a super unique ride whose counterpart I'm beyond excited to get a ride on, Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City. Time Traveler not only has my favorite drop of all time, but it also has two other moments of crazy, spinning ejector. If I had to choose one coaster as the perfect ride, it might just be Time Traveler. Even if you don't like spinning coasters, I almost guarantee you'll love Time Traveler. Number 5 is my last super controversial take, but honestly, I can say that the legend at Holiday World is an incredible roller coaster completely shamelessly. If you know me, then you might know that I have a list of best coasters and a list of favorite coasters, and the legend nearly tops the list of favorites. The layout is a masterclass for Woody's, with strong, sustained laterals throughout nearly the whole ride, as well as a few moments of ejector and floater airtime. Many find either the laterals or the trains uncomfortable, but I absolutely loved everything about this coaster. Number 4 is Maverick at Cedar Point. I was gonna say Maverick is one of the most out of control coasters I've ridden, but that applies to literally everything in my top 5, so just assume that that's the case from here on out. Maverick is glossy smooth, has fantastic restraints, but above all, it has a layout that is everything I want in a coaster. The drop is killer, giving a fantastic jolt of ejector that absolutely decimates any other moment of airtime in the park. There's some ridiculously whippy transitions, more ejector airtime, and even a couple inversions. Maverick is absolutely fantastic, and I can't wait to get back to Cedar Point for it. Number 3 is Maverick's Neighbor, Steel Vengeance. Before you go into the comments and call me edgy for putting Steel Vengeance this low, or stupid for putting it this high, Actually, just go ahead, more money for alert, major bag alert. Steel Vengeance is an absolutely incredible ride, and objectively, I think it's the best one I've ever ridden. I'm so tired of seeing people call it boring, because on my three rides, it had a full 27 seconds of pure ejector airtime, and if that's boring to anyone watching this video, then you have no reason to visit any more parks. Steel Vengeance is a perfect mix of crazy airtime, slightly less crazy airtime, inversions, and slightly more crazy airtime. I could go on for so long about how good Steel Vengeance really is, but for the sake of the video, I'll cut myself here. The top two are the best two woodies I have ridden by an absolute mile. Or well over a mile, because the voyage at Holiday World is my number two. The voyage to me feels like a wooden, more twisty version of Steel Vengeance, and in my woody loving eyes, that is an absolute win. The first two huge hills have insanely sustained floater airtime, the spaghetti bowl feels super out of control, and the whole return trip just has airtime moment after airtime moment combined with strong laterals. The twisted hills around the station are just about perfect elements with a flawless ejector and lateral combination. I honestly don't talk about Voyage enough on my channel, but this is truly a masterpiece and well deserving of a number 2 spot. Okay, I'm not going to try to delay this at all, number 1 is Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City. I know this will probably make some people mad, but Outlaw Run is just the most bonkers coaster I have ever ridden, and that's exactly what I want. First off, it's a woody, and wooden coasters just destroy steel coasters for me. The roughness is there, but far from overwhelming, and every element hits so perfectly. Outlaw Run has both of my favorite inversions that I've experienced, with its weird outer bank thing and the double barrel roll at the end, both of which offer laterals, whip, and airtime at the same time. Now, this is probably a good time to mention that I am a little biased after getting 10 back-to-back -back night rides on Outlaw Run, but it genuinely is this good either way. It has crazy ejector, great inversions, just about the best whip possible on a woody, strong laterals, it is the definition of a full package. 
Sure, it's short, but it doesn't bother me at all. Get out to Silver Dollar City and ride Outlaw Run as soon as possible. You won't regret it. Alright, thanks for watching my rather unconventional top 25. I know it's weird, but I enjoy sharing it, and since I hadn't in a year, it felt like the right time. That's about it, I'll see you guys next time, and uh, goodbye, I guess.